We all saw how Chinese tech stocks nosedived in October, and there seems to be a pattern. The country's GDP came out to be one of the worst results in almost 50 years, and far below the government's stated aim. The reason? Months of widespread COVID lockdowns and a historic decline in the real estate market had a significant negative influence on growth. But there's more to this story. Markets have been shaken by China's leader Xi Jinping's tightening control over the country and his exclusion of reformers to effectively assume sole control of the second largest economy in the world. It's coming back to bite him as China's tech crash is set to destroy the economy. Stay tuned to find out more on this. It all came downhill one fine morning, on October 24th to be exact. Alibaba and Tencent, two of the largest tech companies in China, saw a combined 11% decline in share price, erasing $54 billion from their market worth. Jack Ma, a co-founder of Alibaba, lost $900 million, bringing his net worth down to $20.5 billion. Then, Metuan, an online marketplace, sank more than 14%, followed by Baidu, a search engine, losing 12.6%, and Pinduoduo, an e-commerce platform, over 25%. A $6 trillion blowout happened as uneasy investors sold Chinese stocks. The closely controlled onshore yuan, which has already fallen significantly since last year, lost ground against the dollar in the meantime. It can all be pointed toward the Chinese president and his zero-COVID policy to the pandemic, which killed the economic dealings of tech firms like Alibaba. As a result, the market responded negatively to Xi's decisions, who was only concerned that his ideology, rather than Beijing's brand of capitalism, wins out. Fears over the future of innovation in the second largest economy in the world have been sparked by China's crackdown on private enterprise, which has destroyed more than $1.2 trillion in market value for many strong Chinese enterprises. However, some argue that Beijing's attempt to gain control doesn't have chaos as its ultimate objective. The Chinese Communist Party, which is currently in power, wants to make it plain to its corporate allies that accessing capitalist markets is acceptable under certain conditions only. We are seeing Chinese regulators fining businesses, banning their programs from app stores, and requiring certain enterprises to entirely revamp their operations to fit their criteria. Then, regulators' announcement of restrictions on China's for-profit education sector and its food delivery business resulted in hundreds of billions of dollars in market value being destroyed. All of this comes as Xi slides into an unprecedented third term as president, with a group of his supporters and loyalists into the Politburo Standing Committee, the center of power within the Chinese Communist Party. The reason for that move? Well, it makes it unlikely that anyone will question any policy blunders that Xi makes, even if it means he ends up killing their tech sector and eventually the economy. China has tightened regulations on the internet industry in areas like data privacy and how algorithms can be utilized thanks to policies put in place under Xi's leadership. With their weakest growth ever reported this year, Chinese digital giants Tencent and Alibaba have lost billions of dollars in value as a result of these two policies. Tech stocks have never been Xi's closest allies, and it's obvious that the market believes that the purging will continue. The majority of the new leadership are party officials with little to no prior experience and a questionable track record in economic management. Yeah, that's a sure shot way to destroy your economy. Beijing believes that attempts to limit private enterprise are necessary to prevent instability in the economy and among the populace. Also, they're meant to address long-standing issues with overwork, data privacy, and educational inequity. Beijing's campaign against private businesses is ultimately about control. Preventing private company conduct that could lead to more independent and potentially non-conformist actions undermining Beijing's state-centric model is the top aim. Then the government turned on technology, suddenly canceling Ant Group's IPO in November. Later, it was mandated that the business, best known for its Alipay payment app, restructure its operations and become a financial holding company. 
Naturally, the entire tech sector came under scrutiny. After regulators charged Alibaba with acting like a monopoly, the e-commerce business was slammed with a record-breaking $2.8 billion fine. Other businesses, such as e-commerce site Pinduoduo and social media and gaming behemoth Tencent, have also been called before regulators looking into allegations of anti-competitive behavior. Regulators are also targeting other businesses, and authorities are focusing their investigation on other Chinese companies that are listed on the U.S. stock exchange because of data security concerns. In terms of its length, intensity, extent, and the speed at which new policies are being announced, the crackdown is unparalleled. Some analysts, though, believe Beijing is right to justify its unprecedented crackdown as a vital public benefit. For instance, they've got charges that Didi and some other apps handled sensitive data about its Chinese users improperly, endangering both individual privacy and national cybersecurity. These were the focus of the regulatory onslaught on those companies, initially at least. But there's another thing they have to worry about. China's also getting more and more concerned about unemployment, particularly the welfare of its young workers, who are increasingly protesting about a culture of oppressive overwork. Among young people, a movement known as Laying Flat, or Tangping, has gained tremendous popularity. They're all about rejecting cultural demands to work hard, get married, have children, or acquire property because of the diminishing rewards of accomplishing such goals. On top of that, Chinese software firms have received a lot of criticism for putting young people to work long hours and encouraging an unhealthy work ethic. Urban young workers have taken particular offense to the term 996, which refers to the practice of working from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week. It's also rumored to be widespread among large technological organizations. The ruling Chinese Communist Party seems to have been concerned about the laying flat ideology, so in recent months, the word Tengping has been mostly muted on Chinese social media, and the movement has come under fire from state media. Now, Beijing's strategies involve a lot of risk, and analysts raise concerns that the crackdown could kill China's entrepreneurial spirit. That's a crucial component of the country's economic liberalization, in addition to the $1.2 trillion in market value that Goldman Sachs claims has been erased from well-known stocks. It's nothing new, though. Restrictive central government policies have lowered the valuations of numerous well-known tech companies since 2021. Many foreign fund managers discussed the degree to which Chinese shares had become uninvestable at the height of the crackdown. International investors and experts were previously among the largest supporters of tech companies like Alibaba, Tencent, and NetEase, which for years assisted in accelerating China's growth while changing its economy with cutting-edge so-called super applications. However, mood sharply changed in the second half of 2021 as a result of President Xi Jinping's administration's broad regulatory crackdown on the industry's most potent corporate groups. The good news is, we're hearing that some of the policy toward tech stock is being loosened. As the country reopens and regulatory restrictions on the industry lessen, China's tech equities have launched a $700 billion rally, attracting the attention of foreign asset managers who'd previously deserted the market. The Chinese-dominated Hang Seng Tech Index in Hong Kong has increased roughly 60% since its lows in late October, with market value gains of $350 billion from titans like Tencent and Alibaba. The gains, which have started to materialize only a few weeks ago since Beijing started easing its COVID-19 limitations, contrast significantly with the low period for Chinese tech markets. Now, even though local investors and hedge funds have been buying up China tech stocks from the start of the boom, strategists and traders claim that most mainstream foreign investors have yet to make the investment. In addition, authorities have resumed approving the sales of new video games that are crucial to Tencent and NetEase. Oh, and Didi, the ride-hailing business that was banned from Chinese app stores two years ago due to an inquiry, is now permitted to sign up new clients. You can tell they're making an effort to persuade international investors that the worst of the technology crackdown has already passed. As the Chinese government makes some hasty constructive moves, we'll stick with actions that speak louder than words. 
With the shock of the past three years, global funds are likely still underweight and have left many wondering if revenues can increase. Or if there's another tech crash looming around, only time will tell. One thing is for sure, if China wants to steer clear of total economic collapse, the government will have to ease up on all those restrictions, stat. What's your take on China's tech crash? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to watch the next video and subscribe to our channel.